Okay, so here it is, Logitech's new £200 webcam. This is the Brio, and as you can see, it looks fantastic. It's um, the same core concept that most Logitech webcams are, uh, with the sort of the very wide but very shallow body type to it. Again, it has their usual kind of clamping system to it, which is really good. It can grab onto uh, laptops, it can grab onto monitors, it can grab onto sort of pretty much whatever else you want to try and mount this thing on. If I put my fingers there like that, it will quite hip happily hook over anything. And I can just squeeze that in like that, and it's a solid, solid fit. So really nice stand, really nice design. Um, now the headline features, what makes this thing special is whilst most webcams will top out at 1080p 30 frames a second or maybe 60 frames a second at 720p, this one can actually do 60 frames a second at 1080p. Now that makes it a very unique bit of equipment. It can also do 4K video as well, although again you're limited to 30 frames there. Now what makes it capable of doing these really high resolutions and frame rates is the USB 3 connection on the back. Uh, now most web cameras are USB 2 and USB 2 you're limited to 480 megabits per second. Now that is not enough bandwidth for 60 frames at 1080p. However with the USB 3 connector on the back of this one um, you can reach those big high frame rates. So we've got a C connector there and it comes with a USB C to USB 3 A connector. So it'll connect to a standard USB 3 port on a laptop or desktop computer. Um, you can plug it into a USB 2 port, but you're not going to get the 60 frames a second if you do that. So if we look on the front of it, we've got the same dual mics there and there uh, that the previous Logitech webcams have had. Uh, however, the difference is stop there because right here we've got a light sensor and we have an infrared sensor. And that allows it to do the new Logitech HDR3 technology, which gives it really good lighting, really good contrast, and very clever autofocus. So very smart device all around. This is why this thing is costing £200 instead of the £60 or so that a C920 costs. There is a lot of technology packed into this thing. However, some of that to a certain extent is just simply because Logitech know that there ain't no other webcam that can do what this one can do. So let's plug it in, fire it up, and see if that's actually worth the money and all the, and all the glitz in the glass. Okay, so let's do some comparisons between the C920 and the Brio that I both have. Both cameras are sitting on top of each other, so they have almost exactly the same shot. They're both set to a 70, 78 degree field of view. Uh, they are both set to manual white balance to keep, the, to keep the colors as close as possible to each other. They have automatic uh, brightness controls and automatic focus switched on. Uh, so let's do some comparisons. This is the C920 and we're getting a pretty decent picture. There's a little bit of smudge around the edges, which is normal for the C920. And the whole thing has a very sort of cool uh, tones to it. It's very cold color tones. However, you can't really warm up the C920 because as you can see, if you look at this red circuit board up here and also the color of my lips, we're already on the limits of saturating the reds. So if I make the picture any warmer to brighten up my skin tones or anything like that, we're gonna start oversaturating. So now let's switch over to the Brio and see how that compares. Bang. So straight away on the Brio, we can see that everything has gone much, much more contrasty. The brightness is about the same. However, there's a lot more contrast bringing the picture to life. And likewise, my face has gone a much warmer color. You can see the yellows and the reds on my face. Uh, however, my lips have actually gone slightly cooler in color. They've gone a bit more pastel. And all these circuit boards behind me, those have also gone to much more natural tones. So despite the fact that we're at the same brightness and the same white balance, we've actually got much nicer looking colors. And that immediately is the huge difference that I've seen with the Brio webcam. You'll also notice that some of that smudge around the edge has actually gone away now. If you look up here into this bit and we do a quick switch back and forth, so this is the Brio, that's the C920. You can see how that's gone slightly out of focus there. And if we switch back, it's still sharp. So you can see where the Brio is getting much less smudge around the edges. And that's also important because if we change the Brio up to 90 degrees like this, you can see that we've now, we were at exactly the same resolution, but we've got a much wider shot now. And even at the 90 degree field of view, there's still no smudge around the edges. If I put my hand out here, you can see there's no smudge on my fingertips at all, where it's going slightly smudged around the edges of the wide angle, which is normally what you will see 
when a, a lens is at its limits, which the C920s is, quite frankly. It's at 78 degrees, but you can really see it's on the limits of how wide it can go without having a bit of a fisheye effect to it. So overall, it's a really nice effect. The other huge difference that we've got is 60 frames a second. If I do some comparisons, if I just sit here and wave my arm like this, nice and smooth, but on the C920, it's almost gone choppy. It almost looks like we're dropping frames because technically we are, we've, we've gone down to 30 frames, yet 60 frames, suddenly it's all smooth again. That's the difference between 30 frames a second and 60 frames a second. You can see it, it's very real. And although it's not a showstopper, I mean, when I'm just a talking head on the C920 like this, that, you know, that 30 frames a second is fine. I look, I look fine like this, but at 60 frames a second, it's a very subtle change. Just suddenly I kind of pop out of the screen a bit more. I look more real. I look like I'm talking to you through a window instead of um, instead of talking to you as some kind of, you know, pre-recorded thing, which it is, but you know, this is what photography is all about. It's making it look real. So what other changes have we got? Um, the, uh, the brightness controls in general, the C920 on a wide angle shot like this is pretty good at automatically detecting brightness. Let's switch back to that. And let's hold up this big silver laptop. And as you can see, the auto brightness is compensating for that. And so is the autofocus. And that's coming in like that. And it's focusing on the laptop. It's struggling a little bit where there's not much to focus on, but it's there, it's doing okay. And if we move that away, it doesn't take too long for it to readjust to my face again. So let's do the comparison on the Brio. And so if we hold that up, now as you can see, it's actually adjusted much quicker. There's no hesitation on the autofocus. And if I move that away, it's back onto my face at really high quality straight away. So the Brio is definitely quicker to react because it actually has physical sensors on it instead of relying on the software drivers to manage this. So this is a very subtle difference, but it is there. It does show that the Brio is a better camera. So there's the direct comparisons. Let's do some other shots now. Okay, so uh, let's do a little bit of close-up work. Um, on the normal sort of close-up shots that I do in most of my videos, there's very little difference in it. Um, this is the Brio we're looking at. And as you can see, its macro focus is also pretty good. And once again, not a lot of smudge around the edges, just a little bit, but nothing that's really noticeable. Uh, once again, the 60 frames a second is really playing into it. So as I move this around, it's very easy to track the motion. It's not harmful on the eyes or anything like that. So what about if we go to super, super close uh, lens? Let's see how close this thing can go. So right up to there. And I'm going to manual focus. Closer. Okay, and on its absolute nearest focus, that is how good we can get. Now you can see we've got mega smudge around the edges now where we're at a very extreme focus point. However, I am about, uh, I'm about three quarters of an inch away from the lens here, about two centimeters. Very close stuff for a normal camera. So that's pretty impressive. And also likewise, there's not a huge amount of light getting to this point now. I don't have a, a light angled between the uh, subject and the lens. So we're keeping a lot of quality and a lot of visual quality there. Not bad. Okay, let's see how well the C920 can do it. So here's the C920. Again, the normal close shots. And we've lost that 60 frames, so there's a lot more blurriness as I move things around. Let's come in for the super close angle and let's see what we can do. So the closest stuff, that reflection is doing weird stuff to the automatic brightness. Really weird stuff. If I cover that up, it's fine. Weird, okay. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, pretty good detail. Let's go for the super macro shot. So hard maximum focus. How close can we get? So again, pretty good. It's struggling to find the brightness here. As you can see, it's not quite as clear as the Brio was. We can still get almost as, well, no, we're a good inch away now. So the Brio can go closer. That's about as close in as I can get and keep things in focus. So we can't quite get as close, 
and we're washing out a little bit to do it as well. So the Brio will go closer. Okay, so if we do an experiment with our long shot, as you can see, the Brio is actually getting quite a nice picture out of the window. Um, it's kind of variable lighting at the moment. The sun is kind of filtering through clouds at the moment, so it's coming in and out. Uh, but everything is roughly in focus. We've got that lovely 60 frames a second, and the lighting is pretty good. Uh, switch over to the C920, and we've lost the 60 frames a second, um, so everything has just suddenly gone a bit janky. But more noticeably, the shot is just not in focus at all. Uh, the C920 just will not, it's as, it's as long as the focus will go on this camera and it can't do it. Uh, comparison again to the Brio, bam. Suddenly it looks like we're switching to HD all over again. So if you're trying to do longer range shots, or if you want your webcam to be a security camera looking out a window or something like that, the Brio is vastly superior in every possible way. Okay, so for this test, we're now recording at 4K downscaled to 1080p, uh, 30 frames a second. Although you're actually seeing it at lower than 30 frames because we're getting on the limits of what my computer can comfortably record here. Um, so as you can see, there's no real noticeable difference in quality, quite frankly. Um, the, I mean, it's possible that if we were on a 4K monitor, we'd see the difference. However, in terms of downscaling, there's no real benefit to the 4K mode, so far as I can tell. So I think the 4K is a bit of a gimmick with this. I would much rather be at 1080p 60 frames a second with that comfortable performance. Okay, so conclusion time. Which do I think is better? Which do I think is worth the money? So the Logitech Brio, it's 200 pounds. The C920 is 60 pounds. Is the Brio worth it? Uh, I'm going to answer that with another question, and that is how much do you want to spend, to be honest. If you're just starting out recording on for YouTube or for Twitch or for whatever you want to do, and you are really uncertain about investing money, you don't have much to spend, you don't want to invest for no guarantee of a return, to be honest, buy the C920, because the C920 is a cracking camera uh, and it's very inexpensive for the quality it gives you. Uh, however, if you've got £200 to spend and you want as good a webcam as you can possibly get, money is no object, you're like, nope, I'm spending money, I'm going to buy the best webcam I possibly can, the Brio is the better camera. I mean, we can see side by side here, the, the Brio on the right hand side of the picture, it's visually a nicer quality picture, and again, that 60 frames is very indisputable, it really brings things to life. So yeah, I'm loving the 60 frames, I'm loving the contrast, I'm loving the colours. I'm going to be keeping the Brio as my main web camera from here on out, and that's going to be my main crane camera that does all the detail shots that I use. Uh, however, it was not without cost. Overall, I think it's a great camera, but it's too expensive. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now.